Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm under a bit of time pressure today. It's my father's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad, if you're watching. Uh, I'm expected out to lunch. I've no idea how long lunch might go on for, but it might be a while. Um, so I was meant to get a video done earlier this morning, and of course I have failed. So we're going to be looking at this puzzle, and I'm hoping shy, I'm hoping shy this isn't an absolute monster. It's called Binary Fission, and it's a classic Sudoku. Um, and Shai wrote to us and said that she's really proud of this one. And if Shai says she's proud of it, that basically means it's going to be awesome. Um, now, interestingly, I haven't heard from the testers that I need to put this into a solver. Sometimes they tell me, put it into a solver and, it'll, and the solver will say it's absolutely monstrously difficult. Um, but I've not been told that today, so it might be approachable. Although I do know that Shai's puzzles recently have all been showcasing sort of unusual logical techniques so we'll have a look at this i don't quite understand binary fission in the title someone will have to explain it to me at the end um now before we kick off and I read you the rules which won't take long um i want to just mention of course this incredible puzzle pack we've got going on um over on patreon at the moment this is available free on patreon um it's panthera and the asylums um basically introduction to Japanese sum Sudoku and these puzzles are beautiful because they're so colorful and because you basically get a picture once you complete them correctly so if you um, hopefully many of you all know the rules of Japanese sum Sudoku but if you don't read the rules and you'll understand um, but each of these puzzles leads to a picture don't get stung we can perhaps imagine what that might be um, arr, I don't know what that one is um, eclipse there and there's a not an alarm clock dedicated to Simon. So uh, I haven't actually done that one yet. So I should really do that and find out what what has been dedicated to me. Um, anyway, as I say, do have a go at those. You will enjoy them. And these are preparation for our November monthly reward on Patreon, which is coming in just a week's time, where there will be a whole plethora of these puzzles for you to solve, all of different difficulties going right through the difficulty scale. And they are gorgeous. Um, so we're looking forward to releasing that in due course. Now, let's get on with binary fission. I'll read you the rules. Here we go. Normal, Sudoku, rules, apply. There, I've said it. That's it. So do have a go. As always on Cracking the Cryptic, you can play the puzzles yourselves. The way to do it is to click the link under the video in the video description, and that will allow you to play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. And with that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. So twos i can see have to go in one of those squares i should probably go in order with shy's puzzles because i notice shy often hides the tricks that she's put she hides in the puzzles in the early digits um so it's probably famous last words here ones have to be in one of those cells um ones have to be in one of those cells hmm. already this looks quite strange to me i don't know whether this is just me being Ooh, be, me being um, pessimistic, but whenever you get sort of cells locked into diagonals, I always get nervous that there is some unusual structure <laughs> going on in the grid. I don't know if I can do any more two pencil markings. Threes. Um, so these corner pencil marks, by the way, the reason I put these in the grid are they are telling me when, when a digit can only go in exactly two positions within a box. So corner pencil marks are box logic. They are looking at boxes and telling me something about the box. Central pencil marks are telling me about the cell um, and the limits on that cell. So hmm, one thing I'm noticing here, which I might try and keep track of just because I've noticed it and often it's important, is the three in row two can only go in one of two places. Um, now I don't have a good way of pencil marking that, so I'm just going to orange it for the time being. And uh, we'll carry on ignoring that until I get stuck when I'll come back to it. So four in box... Um, Five has to be in one of two places. Not quite seeing it. Oh, four in box nine has to be in two places. F oh, five. There's a two-five pair. 
Um, actually, let me do that longhand in case you're new to pencil marking. So in this box, using box logic, the 2 was locked into one of two places and the 5 was locked into one of the same two places. So this has to be a 2-5 pair in some order. So I immediately switch the pencil marks round to the central cells because I now know this cell is a 2 or a 5 and this cell is a 2 or a 5. And at the moment I get this, what I'm doing is I'm scanning around the grid and looking back into this box. So I'm wondering if this 7 has acquired more potency now that it can't go in this cell, for example, or this 8. But unfortunately, I don't think I don't think there is much else going on there. At least nothing I'm seeing quickly. 5, look at, see, you're getting all these offsets. It's weird. Um... Hmm, okay, let's try sixes. Ah, oh, two things I'm seeing about sixes. One, they're in those positions and therefore those positions in box six. But perhaps more interestingly, those sixes are pinching box nine. And you've got to put the six in the same position the fours go into. So that has become a four six pair. six pair so have we got anything else going on with sixes yes yeah, sorry i just missed that one as well six can go into one of two places in box one and two places in box seven seven we've only got one seven in the grid so the seven has let itself down frankly that's not doing much at all the eight mm, oh dear yeah the eight also look or oh, nines Nines at least I can get a pencil mark from. That always seems like a small victory. Nine, ah, second pencil mark on nines. Okay, so this is not this is not going well. I've not got anything. Um, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. So, what should we do now? We, I think we've got we've got choice basically, and neither of them are very appetising. But what we can do is we can try and look for um, weak cells. So the best way of finding weak cells, frankly, is to find rows and columns that are stacked with digits. So I'm thinking about row two, where although I don't know exactly the order of this two and five. Because I know these are the digits 2 and 5, I know that none of those four cells are 2 and 5, and they're obviously not 1, 4, or 9 either. So these squares are 3, 6, 7, and 8. So that square is 7 or 8 only. That square is 3, 6, or 7. I see, I'm not, terribly, I'm not a terribly big fan in classic Sudoku of labelling cells with three options at least not at this stage um that's six seven or eight but i really am a bit stuck here column five is where i might look next oh no what i might look at next is box nine actually because the four six pair we've got here means that these other squares have to be ones twos threes and nines although yeah that square that has to be a one or a nine only sees two and three that square has to be a 2 and a 3 only because it sees 1 and 9. But that one can be most things and that one can also be most things. <laughs> this is not going very well. Um, let's come back. Let's have a look at column 5 then. We've got 1s, 4s, 5s, 7s and 8s. That square... Ah, 1, 7 and 8 only, because it sees 4 and 5 in its box. 1, 4, 5, 7 and 8. So that one is 4, 5 or 7. That one is, is basically useless. 1, 4, 5 or 8. That one's a bit better. <laughs> that one can't be... That one can be 4, 7 or 8 because it sees 1 and 5 in the row. So there is almost 
That's almost a triple, but not quite. The one in this column can only go in one of two places. The five can only go in one of two places. Right, so let's take a look at that. So we've got So we've got a weird thing going on with ones, look. So if that's a one, you push a one here and you push a one there. Because there's this sort of spindle thing going on with ones in that sort of two-shaped backward Z. Um, because the ones are locked into one of those two, we've got this, in fact, this is a very strange pattern of ones going down the grid. The sort of interacting through these two cells. Just stare, sorry, I'm just going to stare at this for a bit longer. Um, so if this is a one, this is a one, and this is a one. And that would be a one, and that would be a one. So you almost get an awful lot of joy. In fact, you may even get all of the ones in the grid. Because that would be a one, that would be a one, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you would get all the ones in the grid. So if that's a one in one, you, all the ones immediately get placed. If that's the one, on the other hand, you get a one here. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, no, and you get a one here. One in one of those two. I'm not sure. There may be a way of fixing that, but I don't quite see it. So I'm sorry. I think I've misled you with that. Right, let's have a look at fives. So fives. <sighs> There's just nothing going on in box. In boxes four and six, there is nothing going on don't like the look of five, fives at all, I'm afraid. Um, bother. Right, so we're going to have to try and find more weak cells, I think. Where are we going to find them from? Problem is, we've got very little, there's very little places to even think to look here. Because all of the other rows and columns, I think, and boxes, have only three digits in them. So we're going to be trying to find, we really are going to be trying to find a needle in a haystack here. Cells like that, that's restricted. You see that it sees four, six, eight in its column and three different digits in its row in two, five and three. And in fact, it sees one in its box. So that square can only be seven or nine. which hmm, is almost interesting with that one. We should probably check these corners because that's somewhere that the patterns can be hidden. Um, but let me, let me just see if I can see anything else that's obvious. So that square that sees all the low digits. So this is six, seven, eight or nine, which is a yeah, I'm, I'm not really prepared to pencil mark that. That one. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, seven or eight, I think. Let me just double check that. It sees two, three, four, five, six, nine. Yeah, one, seven or eight. So that's actually not very restricted. Um. Two, seven. There really aren't many places. I, re I really don't think there are. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Shy, where have you hidden the magic in this one? One, two, three, four, six, and seven. What about that square then? One, three, seven. It's no good. Three. Four. 
Ah, that square's restricted. That square is very restricted, actually. Hang on. One, two, three, four, six, and seven. So one, four. That square's only one or four, I think. I'm just going to double check this one as well because I wasn't expecting that. One, two, three. Can be four. Can't be five, six, seven. Can't be eight or nine. Yeah, one or four for that square. So, so maybe I've got to go along here again. One, four, five, six, eight, nine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, that sees one, four, five, six. That's only eight or nine. So again, it's almost interesting with these three. These three cells are a bit sus. But they don't, I was wondering if we were going to get some sort of bent triple there, but we just don't get it. Those, those are four different digits, not three different digits. One, let's check this one. Uh, so that one is useless, basically. Well, not quite absolutely useless, but can be five, six as well, five, six or eight. So we're stuck. That's, that's what we're learning. We've got stuck. You are. That, oh, actually, that is interesting. If that square is not a one, you do have a bent triple. Ooh. Those three squares, let me just highlight those three squares and show you what I'm talking about. Um, imagine this square is not a 1. That's a 7, 8, 9 bent triple. So if they were all in the same column of the Sudoku, we would instantly say, oh, well, it's a 7, 8, 9 triple. And we could delete 7, 8, 9 as options from the rest of the column, like this square, for example. But they're not in a line. They're, in a, they're bent around the corner. But it's still interesting because... You'd always get a 9 in one of those two squares as a result of the bent triple, because if this couldn't be 1, whether it was 7, if it's 7, this is 9. If this is 8, this is 9. So you always get a 9 in one of those two, pointing at that square and forcing that to be a 1. That's really, that's quite beautiful, actually, because what we can, it's almost like a diagonal Sudoku. Yeah, well, yes, in fact, I can delete one from that square. Oh! No, hang on, that's nonsense. What I was thinking was, either this square is a one. If it was a diagonal Sudoku, it would be, it would be very powerful. Either this square is a one, in which case it's a one. Or... This square is a 1 because there is a bent triple. Ah, so does this work through the crankshaft then? So if we got a 1 here, the 1 in column 5 is we know is here. So either you get a 1 here and a 1 here. Oh, this is, you're right, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Got it. Right. This is really smart. This is, well, it's classic shy is what it is. And it, it's, it was hard to spot this one, but I think I have, well, I've certainly spotted something. I do not know what this is called. It's like, um, it's like a possible bent triple that may or may not exist. It's like a, it's not like a finned bent triple, but it's, it's something like that. It's sort of a hypothetical bent triple because We've got a situation where either this is not a, if this is not a one, we have the bent triple and we get the one here, or this is a one. But if this is a one, column five comes into its own. And we can say that the one in column five has to be here. But if the one in column five is here, well, lots of things happen. But the point is that either you get a one here and a one here in the finished grid, or you get a one here and a one here. So, so there's this weird offset of ones that must exist. But that means if we consider row three in isolation, there is a one in one of those two squares for certain. And if we consider 
Row 7 in isolation, there is a 1 in one of those two squares, for certain. So that square cannot be a 1, and that's a 4. And therefore, in the central box... Oh, this is massive. This is massive. Right, in the central box, where does 4 go? It's got to go there, according to my pencil marks. Uh, maybe it's not... Well, I've seen one other thing I can do from this, but let me just see what else this is doing. Um... I'm seeing it's tidying up the 4 and the 6 over here. That was the other thing I saw. But actually, maybe that's not enough. Oh, it, maybe it is. That 6 is now useful. So maybe we've just got to really... Con yeah, the, our pencil marks are doing wonders here. Because now 6 in box 1 can't go there anymore. So must go here, according to what we've just done. Now 6... Yeah, where does 6 go in this box? It's got to go here by Sudoku, and that's in an orange cell. So, oh, not only do we get the six in that box, oh, how many sixes have we got? The answer is, once I've done that one, perhaps all of them. Yeah, I've got all the sixes. When I place this six, I displaced my, my orange three possibility, so that square's become a three. That's the world's most disappointing three. It's hardly done anything at all. But anyway, let's fill that in and see whether that makes the world a clearer place. Uh, so we've got a seven, eight pair here now. Oh, ooh, I've got a seven, eight pair in column. This is massive. I've got a seven, eight pair in column five. So that's become the one. Now, this is not the one. So that now we have our friendly neighborhood bent triple which we know forces a 9 into one of the wings at least. One of these red squares is 9, so that's not a 9. So that's a 1. Uh, 1 must be in one of these two cells. Uh, the 7, 8 is also dealing with that square, but let me just follow through with the 1s, just see if we can do anything else with those. Um, yeah, we can place a 1, I think, in box 1. We can place, yeah, we can place all the, I think we can place all the ones. Yeah, we can. Wow. <laughs> um, so now this square's a five because of the seven, eight pair. That's very nice. That gives me an eight here. Um, does that do anything else? It puts a five in one of those squares. I can obviously see the eights doing some other things and that this digit should be known. So that that's become a nine now. We, we don't know this isn't a 9, though. You can't assume that. It's still possible this is also a 9. Right, so we now... Can we do more? There's a 9 in this domino in box 4. 7, 8 here. So this square here must be a 4. So that... Ah, that's beautiful. So 4 has to be here, which places the 9 as well. So 9 is now in that domino in box 6. How many 4s have we got? The answer is many. There's got to be one more there. I think that's all of them. Um, okay. So where should we look now? That square is not 5. So this box needs 3s, 7s and 8s. Let's put that in and see what we can do. Yeah, we can see the 3 has to be in one of this, these two squares. So combined with this 3 gives us a 3 here. Now we know we need 7s, 8s and 9s along row 1. Don't know if we can tidy that up somehow. I can't quite see how. That's got to be a 7, 8 or 9. OK. OK, we've got to pause for breath and I think start to think again now. 5s, 7s and 8s complete column one so this is a five or a seven in the corner here two three there's got to be a nine down here that's not interesting so twos fives and seven so this is two or seven this is two five or seven this ah there we go where does eight go this is a good question in column three it can only go there so eight seven go in the grid eight goes here we get a seven nine pair 7 comes out of this square and out of this square, which is rather gorgeous. So that becomes an 8 now. 
we found an 8-9 pair in box 6, which was one of the most recalcitrant boxes, wasn't it? So this one is starting to behave itself all of a sudden. Get rid of the 2s in the corner here and the 5. Oh, yeah, get rid of the 5 from there. That's nonsense. We don't need that anymore. Um, there's got to be an 8 in this domino in case that matters for anything. Oh, this 8 down here. Hang on, how did I... How did I not spot that when I put the 8-9 pair in? That is one of the questions that no doubt you're going to be asking me in the comments. <laughs> that's now an 8. This 9 is now a 7. That's a 9. That's a 7. That's a 9. That's a 9 in the corner. It doesn't get a song, but it's still very welcome. This has got to be a 2-5. Two, 2 or a 5, don't think we know. Um, this 7 is powerful. That's putting a 7 there. Could have got that from the 8 as well, obviously. This 7 is resolving everything. Down here, down here, down here. Um, that square's got to be a 2 or a 5. Don't know if we know which yet. And it looks like row, row 4 is going to be quite handy, doesn't it? 2s, 5s and 7s. So this is 5. That's two, that's seven, that's two, that's two, that's five, that's five, that's two. This square is a three seven pair, which worryingly is not resolved. This square here is resolved. Oh, and I see that that unwinds all of those. Put the five in there. Hopefully we can click tick and we have solved Shai's binary fission. Binary fission, is that something to do with these dig digits going round this sort of loop of four. It's so, it's so clever. I, I, I mean, I say this every time we look at one of these classics by Jovial Shy, Philip Newman, Sam Kaplan Lines. They're coming up with completely innovative ideas. Um, I bet you if you put this into a solver, it would not find this. It would find something else, probably, but it wouldn't be this. This is beautiful. It really is. Shy as ever, take a bow. Thank you again for entertaining us. Um, and let me know how you got on in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Back soon on Cracking the Cryptic.